Hello everyone, CSWord here, and there's a lot to talk about furnace rays. So let's go ahead and get started with what doesn't work, but what I kind of wish would. So if you have a llama or mule with items in their inventory, a hopper or hopper minecart does not draw items from them, which kind of would be cool if you were traveling along a blue ice pathway. Speaking of blue ice pathways, if you try and push a minecart along a blue ice pathway, it does not travel at any speed worthwhile. That's probably because also trying to move one using a slime launcher, it travels like no distance at all. That's likely due to the fact that they don't that they still have friction unlike other things, and that may be a bug, may not be, but these things would be cool if they would work, but for now, meh. Anyway, moving on to what does work, we have the good old equal item distribution and simultaneous activation one. So if I throw some items into the chest here, they'll make their way along the hopper chain, and once one reaches the back hopper here, the comparator will activate to deactivate the torch to unlock the hoppers underneath to draw one item from each hopper to equally and simultaneously power the fern eye that would be underneath. All right, and so because we're working with hoppers, we're limited to hopper speed, which is 9,000 items per hour, and we would have all the additional hoppers per each module here, meaning extra lag. Not to mention that we are limited to uh, 15 redstone dust, and you could try and stretch it out to be 16 if you really worked at it, but eh, it's probably not worth it for this, unless you're going for a completely silent design. Anyway, moving to a slightly faster design by Robot the Robot. The first robot's actually in Chinese, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I will have a link in the video description to all of the videos mentioned in this, but in his design he has a instant dropper chain underneath some uh, observers that are slowly decreasing over a comparator decay clock, like so, and my uh, decay clock is actually faster. However, these decay clocks only work in the east and west direction, which is the first limitation of these, because if we try north and south, it's just really bad. It's not consistent. The best you can get is if it does every half one, like so. Okay, all right, and so in his video, he had it only at 15 droppers. I fix it to be uh, 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that they're all at five, even the first one here. And then if I run the clock once, it's kind of cool, it's mostly silent. And then at the end, we see that each of these have six. So this would be really neat if it were consistent at all, because whether you're working with quasi power or direct power of the droppers, it's just not consistent. And most of it, it comes to do with how the items are being pulled from the droppers. So with this design right here, the side on, on the right here works perfectly fine. The side on the left here drains all the items into like the second barrel. All right, I tried fixing that by locking the uh, hoppers and by trying quasi power, but having the exact same design from here over to here, this one works just fine. This one, not at all. So again, if, if it depends on where you're building this, it's not a design worthwhile. Not to mention that the cycle speed is 3.2 seconds with 32 fur and I, or in this case just droppers, on each side. That would then, after some math, give you 36,000 items per hour for this double tape together module. So divide that in half for each module and we get 18,000 items per hour. And that's basically exactly dropper speed. So with just how precisely exact this is to dropper speed, it's not worth it to build it if it's going to rely on so many inconsistencies. And so I found a design by KK and Elige, which works exactly at chopper speed to get the 18,000 uh, items per hour. And while my design here is slightly different than the one in their video, the concept is still the same. We're filling up a dropper right here, and I'm just going to fill up this chest right here for demonstration purposes. And two hoppers equal one dropper, for those of you who do not know. And what we're doing is we're activating a observer clock up top to send one item through the droppers at a time. And then they'll send an item through the hopper underneath to... Uh, activate the furnace and this is the same thing I had in my waterway uh, designed in my previous furnace ray video where the piston here will move the block of redstone to deactivate the hopper not allowing items to uh, pass through until the furnace gets done smelting the item it's on right now and so you can kind of see where the item is and the line right now and it'll slowly start again any moment now but uh, yeah this did fix the issue I was having where items were grouping together and so my design right here takes 54 furnaces pretty simple uh, KK and Elish, theirs takes 48, so theirs is shorter, but theirs takes far more resources and is much more complex. Mine takes fewer resources, but has a very crappy, well, actually it doesn't even have an item return distribution right now because I completely removed it for carpet mod. And uh, yeah, theirs is rather decent. So theirs is probably worth looking into. Mine is also okay. I will probably have a separate video to do a tutorial on this one. So yeah. Anyway, these are all based off of modules, and so the modules, depending on which one you build, will depend on how fast it is. 
So the more modulars, the faster. And this, for instance, has uh, one chest, and then it comes into four different modules. So if I throw some items in here, all four of these will simultaneously activate, getting an equal distribution. Kind of neat. And so if you have eight distributors, 118 or 18,000 times eight gives you 144,000 items per hour. Within that number is going to be significant later. Okay, and so if you want to go all out, you could do something like Beast and have a 1 to 64 item distributor, which would then give you 1.15 million items per hour. That sounds great, except for the fact that you got to consider you're building each of these modules 64 times, or even just for the eight module, eight times. That's also kind of rather expensive in terms of resources. So I tried going back to the basics, starting with the hopper minecart over some powered rail. Okay, so, you know, minecart travels over 8 meters per second, and it has one furnace underneath. Okay, so that's going to give you 8 items per second. When you multiply that by 3600 to get items per hour, that's 28.8 thousand items per hour. If you watch my previous furnace array video again, that's pretty much what I was getting with my optimal furnace design. And so, yeah, that's, this design has pretty much already been maxed out. And mine only has two hopper minecarts. So, in the words of Sonic, we gotta go fast. Alright, so over here, I decided to use a piston bolt with hoppers underneath. And what I did find was over each pass, the hopper minecart would in fact distribute one item to each of the furnace. Now, after doing some testing over there, I came back over here and realized, hey, wait a minute, you can put a hopper on the side, and that will also give you an item into the furnace. But not only that, you can put one underneath of the piston, and that will also allow you to get an item into it. Because while the piston's extended, the hopper minecart will pass over that uh, completely covered hopper right now, allowing you to get an item in there. So, because we travel at 20 meters per second, and we'd have one hopper on each side for each of the furnace, that would give us a total of 40 items being distributed per second, which gives us that 144,000 items per hour. Again, okay? But that's if this is perfectly timed to send off a minecart every 10 seconds because of the uh, furnace speed. And your uh, piston bolt is 200 meters long and has the two, minecart or two hoppers with furnaces on each side, meaning you have an array of 400 furni. Which, um, by the way, I think the 200 surpasses the normal limit for a redstone to keep working right. But if you want to manually reload the middle furnace, um, that, because you can't automatically reload it if you have two more on the side, then that would give you 216,000 items per hour. And a 50% boost, obviously. But, I mean, that's probably not recommended if you're trying to do an industrial setting. Okay, so, uh, I then started messing around with some of Tango Tech's newest design. And first I tried throwing it over a piston bolt, but because the piston bolt's so fast, it will uh, only give two items to each hopper my carts that are sitting underneath. And even if you slowly start to decrease the time, then it pretty much becomes equal with just having powered rail. So, with Tango Tech's design, he has a hopper minecart filled with items go over powered rail to distribute items to more hopper minecarts. Now, each hopper minecart will get five items in it, like so. Okay, and so if we're traveling at 8 meters per second, then that means we get a distribution of 40 items per second again, which, if you realize, is also 144,000 items per hour. Same thing as the piston bolt over there with the hoppers on each or for an eye on each side. So, with this one, in order to get that proper number, every 10 seconds you'd have to send off a minecart and have 80, yeah, 80 of these side arrays with a, a 5 for an eye in each array part. So, again, that's really going above and beyond, but that one is also doable. Just like, uh, well, none of them really. This is really the only one that would fit if you still wanted it all to work using redstone. So, moving on, I decided to try and equally distribute items to four hopper minecart to four hoppers underneath using a hopper minecart, and uh, yeah, because we again get five items per hopper minecart, that's not equally being distributed into the hoppers, meaning it's not going to equally work. And definitely do not try this with a piston bolt. Y yeah, just just no. And so the last thing I wanted to try and do is try and see if a diagonal piston bolt would work. And we do get that equal distribution of items. You could even throw another hopper in the center here. But the problem here is we are traveling at roughly 28 meters per second. And with two for an eye on each side, that's going to be 54 items being distributed per second, which comes to 194,000 items per hour, which sounds great until you realize that the hopper my cart is limited with space and it cannot hold f uh, 540 items. In fact, 
Also, the fact that the rail would have to be 280 meters long is also another problem. Yeah, the minecart only has five slots. We would actually need nine for eight and a half stacks in order for that to work. So as much as this would really be great to have, it just won't work. So in terms of what is the best, uh, it turns out that if you optimize Tangle Tech's design, it can in fact be the only best working one. But if you're going for something much simpler and are willing to have multiple modules, I would definitely recommend going with something uh, along the lines of what KK and H have designed, where you just have hoppers being hoppers distributing items via uh, droppers. Anyway, that's all I have for today, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.